Welcome to my YouTube channel where I am serious about all things fiber, whether it's weaving, spinning, knitting, you name it, I probably do it, except macrame. I don't do macrame. So here I am warping up a pattern. Um, this is the pattern number 246 from the Weaver's Book of Eight Shaft Patterns, edited by Carol Strickler. This is a beautiful pattern that gives sort of a, a basket weave look when in the end. I am using Valley Yarns 8-2 Tinsel in dark blue, white, and maroon. Um, I did a 18 ends per inch on a 10 dent reed. I probably should have done 20 ends per inch, but um, it turned out okay. I was just a little thinner than I was hoping for. Uh, but anyway, 20 ends would, would have been good too. So um, there are a lot of color changes in this pattern uh, and the little technique that I use when there's a lot of color changes is that I will wrap the, when I get to the end of one color, I will wrap the end of it one time around the beginning peg and then I will drape that uh, end off to the left without cutting it, tie on the next color as I'm doing here, and then um, <clears throat> When I get back to the, the color that I kind of tied off, I will just um, start warping with that without having to tie another knot because it's a lot of knots. And I didn't want to have to deal with that when I got it back onto the loom. So um, it worked out really well and uh, that was probably the only thing that worked out really well trying to get this on the loom, but we'll get to that later. So here's me installing my counting thread. It's just a little piece of scrap yarn. And I just wrap this around each section of 10 within the counting cross. And that just also helps me to keep track of everything because you have to be very specific in this pattern. It is six ends for the dark colors and then 24 ends for each of the larger blocks of color. And so I, needed that just to make sure I was keeping track of everything uh, because you better be, it's better safe than sorry and even in the end I actually ended up somehow I ended up with one extra white thread in here uh, but only one extra so I was actually really happy with that <laughs> and that's pretty easy to fix you just drop it out at the at the end when you're threading everything up um, so it didn't turn out too bad but anyway um, so yeah, so now we've kind of gotten things going here and I will go ahead and just stop talking and let you guys watch and we'll play a little bit of music until the next step. So here you can see I've changed colors again. I'm doing this in a maroon is that going to be the second stripe color. And um, it is a little bit dark, but as long as the small stripe, the six um, ends stripe, is a much darker contrast 
than your other two larger stripes, the pattern is going to turn out really well. You, you want that, that smaller stripe to turn to be very much contrasted between your two larger stripes. Um, and I've seen lots of people do, um, you know, white, a white uh, small stripe, and then do all of their colors um, really dark. And those have turned out beautiful. And there's um, another one I've seen where it was like rainbow colors and they did a black stripe. Oh, that was really gorgeous. Um, so really, as long as that smaller stripe is a contrasting, very much contrasting color from your other colors, it's going to just turn out really beautiful. Um, I'm using a super dark navy in this case, and the white, and then of course this maroon color, which is just beautiful as well. And here's me counting some more. You see lots and lots of counting. It's really, really important to make sure that you get all of the exact number of the dark stripe and the colored stripes because it's really going to mess you up if you get it over to the loom and you're off by a little bit. So that is why I spend so much time and attention to making sure I have exactly the right number of threads per color. And here we go. Got back up here and making sure I got my threading cross correctly and this just goes on for a really really long time so let's speed things up a bit So I've completed all of the warping. I have all of the stripes done for this bundle. This is bundle number two. And so now I'm just tying things off. And you can see I am tying each section of the count uh, the threading cross up there at the top. I do probably way too many ties than is necessary, but I'm one of those better safe than sorry kind of people. Um, so I put lots of ties on and I don't mind that. And it has definitely saved me on more than one occasion. So down here at the bottom, I actually had a little bit of a, a brain freeze down here and for some reason I ended up tying each section of the counting cross as well, but it was totally not necessary because of the way that I thread my loom. Um, I could have just done like a couple of ties like around the whole bundle instead of each leg like I did there, which was, that's okay, it, it's fine, it worked out, it just was not a necessary step. Um, so yeah, so here I am just kind of pulling things out a little bit just so I can put a couple more ties towards the each end and um, then I will pop it off and you'll see that in a second and I'm just putting a couple more ties here the ones I put on the ends here um, I like because then um, I don't lose all of the ties all the um, color changed ends you know um, so every time you change a color, you tie it on, right? And so I didn't want to lose all those little ends. Okay, so now I'm just um, chaining it up here. I just do like a little crochet chain. And then I will show you what I do next with that. Um, whenever I do warping, I always put a tag on each bundle that I do so that I know exactly which bundle is which and where they go. So I've labeled them with how many ends are in each bundle and which bundle it is. So bundle number one or bundle number two. And that way when I take it over to the loom, I know exactly where they go. 
Okay, so here I am. I've got it all threaded up and ready to go. Um, the reason I didn't show any of the threading was because I just had a terrible, terrible time getting this thing threaded. I'm using a tensile yarn, which I've never used before, and it was very sticky and it got very tangled and it took me forever to get it threaded. Um, and get the tension right and everything so uh, I just I just spared you all the the gory details of trying to get that on the loom uh, but here we are I've got it started and I'm just gonna do a couple inches of plain weave here because I like to do um, this is gonna be a blanket it's a little bit thin but it's gonna be more like a decorative type blanket um, and so I'm probably going to do either a sewn hem or um, a binding of some kind, whether I do like a satin blanket binding or like a cotton um, binding. I'm not sure yet. I haven't actually made that decision. Uh, but anyway, I want to give myself plenty to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and do two full inches of just plain weave before I get into the pattern. And the beauty of editing videos, so you don't have to watch me do the whole two inches. We'll just skip a bit. Here we are. Two inches. I'm going to go ahead and start with the pattern. Uh, it's hard to tell, but the first, uh, because I'm still using the blue, but the first three picks are of this blue color. And um, for this pattern, it is, um, it's eight shaft. Obviously, I've got an eight shaft loom here. Um, actually, it's 10, but I only use eight so far. Anyway, um, so I am doing the first three picks here are going to be of the blue, and then I will switch over to the white, um, and then you'll be able to see the start seeing the pattern emerge. But um, it is, I, I opted not to do walking treadles with this pattern just because it was easier to keep track. So I am doing um, treadles one through four, and then uh, treadles five through eight and that just was helping to me to keep track of where I was at because um, I am a little bit dyslexic and I thought if I tried to do walking treadles with this particular pattern I would probably forget where I was at and then I would end up like totally messed up so uh, because like you do one stripe is going to be um, treadles one through four and then the second stripe is five through eight and then the um, six picks in between are where you transition from treadles one through four to treadles five through six. So, um, I mean, it's five through eight. So you'll see me fussing with my maroon bobbin quite a bit. Um, I do this thing where I buy reusable straws and I just cut them down to size and use those instead of like buying actual bobbins and I really like it. It works really well except for that if I wind too close to the edge they tend to the yarn tends to fall off the edge which does get kind of annoying and I've had to fix it a couple of times but I have just learned to just not get too close to the edge and they work really great and you can cut them to whatever size you need and they are they're sort of a plastic acrylic kind of thing so they will last forever. Um, I was using cardboard ones, which worked well too, but those do go bad after a while because they get kind of um, crunched on the ends. But so I really like the um, the plastic straws, which are much nicer. Uh, but I do again, I do just have to be careful winding on that I don't get too close to that edge.
Okay, so we're actually um, getting here really close to the end and yep, I had come back the next day to finish up the last few inches. Um, unfortunately, I had a little bit of a hiccup with my video in that I ran out of room on my phone and so there's no satisfying cutting off the loom video, which is super bummer, but I will get there on the next one. Subscribe and like for more.